on a monthly industry exchange live stream. Um, today's music, which was really awesome, I don't know if you guys We were vibing. We were vibing. We were vibing. Um, it's actually from a band uh, from San Francisco, so a raw San Francisco band. The tune was called Colors, and of course, you can check out House of Whales at rawartist.org slash House of Whales. So go check out their stuff, definitely recommend it. I'm your host, Megan Jones. Welcome to Raw Artist Industry Exchange. Today, I am joined by co-founders of Darkroom. You can go to darkroom.tech to check them out. Theo Chapman and Anders Bill, welcome to the show, guys. Excited thanks to be here. Yeah, thanks you for having us. Much. Thanks for having us. Um, we're going to speak a little bit about um, photography, visual art, creatives, just in general, printing, selling, all the good stuff. We're about to get down to it. So let's find out a little bit about the company here. So what prompted you guys to start Darkroom? Yeah, yeah for sure. So uh, Anders and I, we were roommates our senior year of college. Um, We'd both been like super involved in the entrepreneurial community there. Um, he had a, a music technology startup. Um, I had built like an iOS app for photographers with a couple of buddies, um, and so we were always you know talking about different ideas. And um, when we graduated, I was looking to become a full-time photographer at the time. So I'd gone through all these like applications, talked to these different like landscape photographers, um, fine art photographers to do you know either an internship or like photo retoucher, first assistant, whatever it might be. And all of these photographers were saying like, hey, you know would love some either like help managing my print shop or like, yo, I don't have a print shop. Like, do you know how to figure that out? And we were looking at each other like, oh, like, mm -hmm. interesting. Like we have like some really established artists and this is like a pretty big pain point for them pretty universally. And then also like printing our own work at, um, at school, we had, uh, you know, get our own paper, go through the whole process and realizing how much like expertise and specialty goes into making a really high end fine art print. But we had access to like this crazy like, ten thousand dollar Epson printer, I'm and we're like, sure, this right? isn't something yeah. that like people have access to. So we're <laughs> yeah. you know really asking this question of like, why isn't this a more accessible process to like the everyday creator in general? Right. And it was like late twenty seventeen at the time, you mm -hmm. know. And I think there were there were dozens of solutions. You know, there was like marketplaces, there were content management systems, and those were all like really great tools. And we saw that a lot of artists weren't using marketplaces because they were getting like 10 cents on the dollar, right. you know, for everything that they sold, right. which didn't seem fair. And then a lot of people were like, oh, I can do it, I can handle it on my own. And then the reality of someone says, hey, I want some of your work. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, like, you know, where am I gonna <laughs> yeah. go? Chico? Yeah, Costco yeah, was a yeah, big yeah. one, Dude. yep, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then like the fulfillment process, and their time is so valuable, especially as a freelancer. Yeah. And so we just wanted to create a streamlined process where artists on Darkroom now, you know, they'll come on, they'll upload their work, they'll set their prices, and really in like two or three minutes, they'll have a global print shop up and running, and then when orders come in, we handle all the fulfillment. So like a drop ship and white label, no matter where they are. Yeah, so so what type of services do you offer then? Like, um, was that just the initial, like, let's get stuff, you know, being able, them to be able to get to print, and like, how did it take off from there? Yeah, yeah, first was definitely printing. Yeah. I think that was the biggest one, because exactly like Theo said, we had seen so many artists that on their page or on their website, maybe it's like a Squarespace, it said shop and you'd click on it, say coming soon, you know, and that was for the last like two years, you know, or whatever it was, yeah, yeah. or it was like, they would say how they would fulfill it, you know, hey, I'm gonna do this one size, uh, and we would start to have conversations with them, and it was super clear that although there were so many printing solutions, not a lot of them were working for artists, and so okay. we thought, let's streamline that as a form of passive income for the yeah. artists, and the way that we did it at first was we basically built uh, a network of fine art print providers where we actually wanted to print it ourselves in the beginning and we realized pretty quickly that there were so many people in the space that have been yeah. doing it for so many years. Like let's tap into the incumbents that are in the space and that have really standardized products. You know, that the same super top. Yeah, which made it super yeah. easy for us because we were like, hey, you know, we might get like frame prints from one distributor, we might get like normal paper prints from another distributor, but we're confident like we found out both of them are gonna be using the same ink, both are gonna be using the same type of like luster paper. It's easy for us to clarify that. Honestly, most of them are using the same printers and that was also a big barrier for us. You know, yeah. like we said, like that big $10,000 Epson printer, we're not like, coming out of college like, yeah, like we're gonna print this ourselves. <laughs> like, I don't know right. if I'm gonna be able to buy that. But yeah. Yeah. so I think really came down to, hey, how do we leverage these different print houses and then figure out like, hey, what are like the most common products that both people want to sell but then also for like customers like what do I want to have in my home what are the things that I'm most likely to be putting up on my walls and so we have just a pretty straightforward product suite where it's you know metal prints canvas frame canvas luster paper and then frame paper and like wow. those are the five right. print types you just upload your photos set your prices and then it's you're ready to rock and roll and then we handle all the back end that's crazy so yeah. that's like a pretty wide Variety. That's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we added know, one at a time. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's only you know five, but that that covers a lot. So, For sure. 
So anything you're looking to expand to next, we all know, like, you know, especially with this type of tech, you know, things, the next biggest, best thing, how For are you sure. guys going to continue to yeah. improve? Yeah. We have a lot of different, uh, like, products that we're super, super excited to roll out. One big kind of like next frontier that we're going to roll into is um, when it comes to digital products. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if there's any, you know, uh, like visual artists or specifically like photographers listening, like you're going to be able to sell your own presets um, to people. And then also looking at, you know, whatever it might be, wallpapers, um, you know, just straight up licensing your images. Uh, and then also going to have like a, a utility version of it where it's like, hey, you can upload whatever type of file you want. You can sell an ebook, um, things like that, where we're just giving people more functionality to be able to sell more different types of versions um, outside of just physical products. Yeah. Which is like the ease of use. It's right. Just like yeah. Exactly. Streamlining exactly. And, and we were having this conversation before, and we know so many people here in LA that have five different sources of income coming yeah. in, you know? And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, for the average freelancer, I'd say it's four to five coming in. Printing might be one of them. Licensing might be one of them. Mm -hmm. Selling presets, which is really like your style. Commercial work. We want to really tackle each one, mm -hmm. for, like holistically. And I think with printing, we're close. You know, there's things that we want to do to shore up that end of the product. But I think we've gone pretty far on that end. Mm -hmm. And that can really scale up. And we want to make the process of launching a darkroom and selling in those different verticals really as simple as it is to create a social media account or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it sounds like you guys are really trying to like tackle those pain points, like you were saying, you know, uh, specifically so that it's just like a, a click and go. Yeah, and yeah I exactly, mean, right, exactly. Yeah, because like that's, I think that's the hardest part. It's like the artist knows, you know, how to be a photographer. They know how to be an artist. Right. They know yeah. how to do those things. So taking out the guesswork when it comes to like potentially monetizing off. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. So Make it. Yeah. Spend as little time as possible on that end. We'll right. take care of the right. of, of getting you yeah. paid on it. Yeah. You just focus your time and energy on what you're great at, which is creating. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Right. So, um, Let's share a little bit of knowledge, I guess, you know, with our viewers. A lot of our raw artists are towards the beginning of their creative careers. So I guess it'd be great if you could give them some pointers. Like when researching printers, for instance, when you guys were doing this, mm -hmm. what um, what should an artist look for to get like both quality and value yeah. out of that? That's kind of the twofold process. I think, I mean, the biggest one is to see the product, you know, okay. like, and so we've made it super simple. Just on our account, you can make a free account and you can order samples. And that was something for us where we realized really early on, like we couldn't, we couldn't give samples for free to everyone, but we could <laughs> yeah, give yeah. it them at a distributor cost. And we negotiated, you know, it's like the bulk discount prices on a per order basis, yeah. so they can get a really good feel of it. And in the end of the day, if it's gonna be in your customer's home, like you want to try it out yourself. Yes, sure. uh, and there's all different types of photo papers that we've gone through. And we, in the beginning of launching Darkroom, I was just remembering this, we had like, seven different types of paper and yeah. in the end of the day and I, I see other companies doing this that sounds really great mm -hmm. you know but there's this level of like decision fatigue yeah. where a lot of times most artists nowadays they don't necessarily know a lot of the difference mm -hmm. and a lot of the customers don't either they definitely if right. the photographer doesn't know the customer right. definitely yeah. does exactly yeah. yeah yeah so we chose one that we felt was like uh, blanketed but also super super high end which is like a premium Kodak Endura and it's like a luster finish mm -hmm. so it looks great in almost all lights uh, and same with all the other types of products. Yeah, so making sure they, they test it out themselves. Yeah, yeah, the yeah for yeah. sure. Like and like easy things to like make sure when you're printing is like, hey, like what are the like printer profiles and the colors, and we can get more into that. Um, what type of paper are you using? Make sure it's like a quality um, paper stock. Like make sure there's like some easy P's and Q's. Like hey, make sure they're printing in 300 DPI. If they're not mm -hmm. printing in 300 DPI, like mm -hmm. it's not a good printer. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And so I think there's a couple like small variables where like, hey, you just make sure these boxes are checked and then you're pretty much good to go. And then of course, make sure you get a sample so there's no surprise when your mm -hmm. customer and, gets a brand. And if it's a platform too, like check what the split is of revenue. You know, like we yeah. wanted to make it super advantageous. And if people use us, great. If they use other people, we just want them to be super aware. Yeah. I think from the last five to 10 years, we've seen people leverage technology against the creators. You know, like mm -hmm. in the sense of the marketplace to say, hey, you know, we will take 50 cents on a dollar and 40 cents of the dollar's cost and you get 10 cents. I think that, you know, 40 cents of cost is partially digital advertising for them. Yeah. But nowadays when artists have their own social media accounts, they have their own acquisition channel in some yeah. way and can sell into that. So we really want to build tools for them to take uh, value out of the people that they already have mm -hmm. instead of bringing in other people. And, and we can do that in the future, but it's, uh, it's always super important that they're just cognizant of a lot of tech companies have taken advantage of artists for a long time. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's very true, especially, you know, kind of like a churn and burn. It sounds like you guys are definitely taking the time to like specifically curate these, you know, each of these different portions. Exactly, so, yeah. Um, 
and you know, like you're talking about all these different types, there's definitely a lot of decision making <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, when yeah. it comes down to size, material, matting, framing. Can you talk us through a little bit like the, the pros and cons of the more common options there? Yeah, for sure. Well, I think there's maybe like two or three super important questions. One is like, hey, what am I like using this print for specifically? Okay. It's like, hey, if I'm gonna like go, if I need a, like a, a large print that I'm gonna hang on the wall and it's gonna be there for 10 years, like right. that's one way, you know, there's a specific type of product for that. But if it's like, hey, you know, I wanna have a spread of like five or 10 prints hanging out on like a coffee table, like mm -hmm. just get paper prints. Like, don't get a bunch <laughs> yeah. of frame prints, right? So right. I think there's some like obvious ways you can go and for like, hey, what am I using it for? But then also like, how long do I want this to last? Um, you know, if you get like a metal print, like there's coverings on it uh, that are like super scratch resistant, like the colors aren't going to fade, there's a lifetime warranty um, where it's like, okay, this is like an investment and I'm going to have this for life. Mm -hmm. Whereas again, like versus a paper print, which are also like fantastic, but you have to be conscious about, hey, where am I setting this? It's like, right. you know, it's yeah. like it's a piece of paper, you know, yeah. um, it's, it's like fine art paper, but still like, you know, don't set a coffee mug on it, yeah, you know, okay. things like yeah, that. Like you can't expect it to be in some sort of like, like crazy temperature where it, where right. it might get yellow or like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think it's like use case, um, how long do I want it to last? And then also, uh, it's like the reality is like the price point, like, Hey, your paper prints are going to be cheaper and that's why they're awesome and people love buying them. It's because it's a way more accessible price point, but Hey, it's like, this is like a really big, like center focused piece that I'm going to have for a long time, like mm -hmm. get a frame print and like, it'll be there forever. And it's going to be like amazing. People are going to talk about it when they come through, especially if you have a specific spot for it, you know? Right. Uh, that's interesting what you said at the end too, because. I think when selling your work as an artist, it feels like we were talking about this before too, it's like a step up, right? In in your life as a freelancer or an artist, and it's such an intimate purchase. Yeah, like that thing sure. is gonna be in someone's home yeah. or in their office, wherever it might be for years and yeah. years. It's super different than buying a piece of clothes, which might get worn X amount of times. So, you know, investing in the quality is investing in the experience, not only that the customer has, but everyone that comes to their house and stipulates a conversation based upon the print or whatever it might be. And I think that conversation of walking into someone's home and seeing a, a piece of art and being like, what is this, you know? Yeah. And I think the conversation is shifting to, I followed this person for right. like five years yeah. on it. And it's just like direct social media uh, engagement, but that's offline and that's yeah. super cool. And we want to tap into that, that yeah, connection. Yeah, creating those kind of like ex little tiny experiences, if you will, like that connection back to the artist is, is super important, especially in this digital age, yes. right? Um, any suggestions, you know, here at Raw, um, <laughs> you, get, you know, we're throwing art shows here, right? So <laughs> a lot of our artists are exhibiting, sometimes for the first time um, yeah. with, with Raw. Um, any suggestions, I guess, on like how to prepare for an upcoming exhibition on a budget? Always balling on a budget. Yeah. <laughs> Always balling yeah. on a budget. Um, That's true. But yeah, I mean, is there any suggestions that you guys have for that? Yeah, for sure. I think you had a great idea with QR codes. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had see, we've seen people. Ted's Little Dream is a super great um, artist that he's a raw artist as well. And he's one of ours, and he ordered uh, a bulk amount of paper prints that he would sell in person at that event. And I think you had the idea maybe a couple months ago, which was QR codes. Yeah. Good. I mean, you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If we're like, if you're thinking of it from like a budget perspective, you're like, all right, like, what's the leanest way I can get all of my favorite like images up there or creations up there on the wall to display them without shelling out a ton of cash and having to have like a ton of inventory there is you can just throw them each up there with one little QR code that links to your shop. Um, mm -hmm. So that way you only have to have one version of each. Right. Maybe you sell the originals and you sign those. You can sell them for more if you want. But the bottom line being like you only have to have one version of each. People can use the car QR codes and then go straight to your shop. Um, so as yeah. it pertains to, yeah, Genius. the budget, make it simple, right. And inventory is like the worst thing to have, you yeah. know, it's like, and you want those bulk discount prices. So people buy inventory yeah. and then they end up sitting on a lot of it and losing that money. I think that's a great way to circumvent right. that, that issue. hundred percent. Yeah. That's so, um, kind of getting maybe on topic, off topic here, yeah. but, um, you, yeah, you make a good point. It's like, you're not having to print like. Because they can just like print one off. It's yeah, on demand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's For the same price. Yeah. Right. So yeah, you're not having to like, oh, I've got to get rid of these 10 things. Right. You, you really don't <laughs> it know builds what up. people are going to resonate right. with, right? right? Until they're like in that space experiencing that. So yeah. like, here are good. <laughs> it's pretty genius, y'all. I'm just saying. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to... We're gonna look for that in a future art show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, what's the, the best way for visual artists to like paintings? You you did say that you guys did that for yeah. visual artists. Yeah. Because photographers, mm -hmm. it's kind of like unlock, yeah. but 
Yeah, if you're a visual artist, how does that work? Yeah, we have one great artist. <laughs> <laughs> we, ha we have a, a couple of really, really amazing illustrators and painters. One of them is Heather Rooney, and she does uh, photorealistic sketches okay. of different people. So she just went to The Rock, and he posted it. She was, it was like a really epic moment. And she sells them on Darkroom by just taking a photo of them but like a super high resolution photo. Okay. You take, make sure all the ambient light is out. Uh, and you can also do scanning, but at the end of the day, scanning is super expensive. Yeah. And, it, and it really tallies up quickly. Yeah, it's kind of like past a certain size, it's tough to scan because like, hey, if it's bigger than like, you know, whatever the magic number is, like 18 by right. 24 inches, mm -hmm. then you have to go to somebody who has a scanner that's big enough to scan super that, right? Yeah. right? And it's like, it can be a nightmare. They can charge you, charge you up really high. But if your creations are smaller than that, um, it's relatively affordable if you're going to be doing a ton of paintings or sketches or whatever it might be um, to get a smaller scanner. Those do work really well in terms of like high quality. The only thing to make sure on those is like, hey, make sure it's exporting in the right file type that you need mm. uh, and the right dots per image, which is can vary widely when it comes to scanners. Because right. like people use scanners for a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to get like basically low quality resolution on those. But yeah. and I would imagine a lot of these painters and illustrators have friends who are photographers. But sure. in the end of the yeah. day, like. Our, our phones are super great and they're like 3,000 yeah. by 5,000 pixels and that allows you to print at some sizes. Okay. So, you know, in a really low shoestring budget, which a lot of people are on as artists, like it's possible to do it that as works, well. for sure. I yeah. was wondering about that because I was yeah. like, okay, like what if yeah. I don't know anything yeah. about it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. I don't have a camera. But you guys are saying like it can be as super simple as like making sure Hey, somebody got a 10x max iPhone out there. I don't right, know. <laughs> right, yeah. okay. right. Use that. That's Use totally that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, for sure. Yeah, you for can. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I, I mean, you know, there's levels. You know, there's yeah. levels for to sure. the quality, yeah, sure. but yeah, yeah. but it works. Yeah, good. for okay. sure. Um, so, <laughs> it's, you guys are able to allow anybody on the platform. They're able to sell their work, get a cut. Um, do you have a pricing worksheet? Do you discuss pricing with artists? Is there recommendations on that? that For you guys sure. Have? Yeah, we have like a we have a creator guide on our site, and one okay. of the things that we have is like, hey, here's our like recommended pricing. For you know these product types um, in these sizes, here's kind of like lower end, medium end, high end, um, and we definitely and this is all based on like a ton of market research we did for hey, you know people that have like X amount of notoriety um, or exposure, like where are they selling their prints at. Um, but then also at the end of the day, like you value your own work however you value it. You know, for at sure. the end of the day, you're naming yeah. your price. Sure. Um, and it's like only uh, people talk about this a lot with contract work, where they're like, hey, you know, like a brand will try to get you, you know, pay you super low amount because. Well, you, you did this shoot in 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Like, you're not paying me for the 30 minutes. You're paying me right. for the years of work right. that enabled me to do this in 30 yeah. minutes, right? It yeah. took me years to learn how to do this with my face. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. No, exactly. Right. You know, so it, it, a lot of it just comes down to, hey, how am I valuing my work, my time, yeah. um, and everything that went into creating yeah. this. I guess that's also a battle of, like, uh, people struggle with the pricing of, hey, I want it to be super affordable and accessible mm -hmm. and sell more, or I want to sell less at a much higher price point. And in the end of the day, they know their audience the best. Yeah. And we always we always have this conversation internally, which was actually a really surprising thing about starting Darkroom. You know, we thought that social influence, like, you know, your follower account would have, we knew it was going to have an impact, and we mm -hmm. thought it was going to be pretty large, but it's actually a lot less than we thought. Yeah. And I think, obviously, that's because you know, you have robot followers and like, there's obviously a saturation in the algorithm, whatever. Mm -hmm. But in the end of the day, we have people who are maybe 50 or 60 years old who have 20 people following them on Instagram who are like some amazing sellers on Darkroom because to their group, they're the artistic influence. Yeah. And that's what's super important. And that's, just, that's why it being a really intimate purchase and being like, okay, like this is my best friend or this is someone who I went to school with ages ago and they made this piece of art. And that connection is super meaningful. And so a lot of times, I think that social media influence doesn't always translate to that relationship. Yeah, for sure. no, I, I think, um, and you know, you, I feel like we experience this on the daily and as, you know, um, socially and, and in the tech world, as that stuff grows, we're getting like farther and farther away, right? So I think coming back and having those, like, yeah. again, those those connections of like yeah. talking in person or like calling somebody on the phone, right. sure. it's like, yeah. you know, it's yeah. crazy uh, how far we've gotten from that. So that's like cool that you yeah. guys are like trying to make that no, connection again. No, 100%. And there's also like little funny things that are on that same wavelength that we'll notice where, you know, there will be somebody who has, you know, 900,000 Instagram followers, they're verified, we think they're gonna make a ridiculous amount of sales, but they'll just like put a link in their bio and be like, 
hey, like right. prints are up and they don't really talk to people and there's not really a personal um, aspect to how they promote it or, yeah. or share it with people. They really won't sell super well. And then there'll be somebody who has, yeah, like, you know, 20 followers, 100 followers, and they're putting up my stories like, yo, I'm super excited. This right. is ready. And like they put a face to it and there's more of a relationship uh, with them and their followers, their friends, you know, whoever it might be. Um, and it's, like you said, it's all about making the purchase personal yeah. and, and making that person excited to talk about the piece of artwork they're purchasing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think creating that type of platform, you know, um, and having that space for the artist to feel comfortable, um, a safe space. You guys are creating yeah. a safe space. A <laughs> we lot hope. Of it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it's it's true. If you know, if you know, they're gonna resonate in that way, and then you know, you for know, sure. Push it out. So, um, so have you come across any creatives, um, like creative ways to display art from artists and buyers? You know, you're supposed yeah. to talking about things for the coffee table or things to put up at home. Yeah. What? And we constantly think about this ourselves yeah. just for new products that we want to build okay. in. I think what's super interesting is, and this connects with the last conversation we have, is being really proactive about who you're selling to and where you're selling into. So for example, we have a good amount of artists that will walk into a coffee shop and they'll be like, look, you know, I'm going to order 10 really big canvas or metal prints or paper prints mm -hmm. and I'm going to have them displayed here. Well. They're not, they're not demanding it. They're, they're asking. Walking. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're asking. They're I want that kind glued of Glued it to the wall. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and <laughs> they'll say, you know, whatever the cut is of like uh, the actual sale, like you'll get a cut and I'll get a cut. But it's great exposure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really creative way to sell. We want to definitely build creative selling tools that help to automate the marketing process when it comes to social media. But I think the in-person part can't be undervalued mm -hmm. in that way. Yeah. And kind of going off that as well, and I think this is something that can be super useful for a lot of people doing um, the, the raw events is people do super well selling collections. And we actually have a feature on our site called, called Collections okay. where it's like, hey, you know, you did a specific um, type of project. Uh, you, know, I, um, you know, I shot these specific people in this specific area and there's a, it's, it's, a, you know, it's visual storytelling, right? Yeah. And being able to illustrate that story across multiple images, mm. oftentimes it's super powerful because it makes it more exciting also for somebody to be able to, instead of just pick you know, one of these 10 super cool photos yeah. uh, or super beautiful paintings, there's a storyline amongst them and it makes you more excited to maybe get the whole group and then that also gives you a lot more kind of flexibility and creativity when it comes to, hey, how am I gonna put this up in my home? Because yeah. now I get to tell a story on my wall too, right. yeah. um, which sure. is something that a lot of people get super excited about that. I mean, and obviously we get super excited <laughs> about it. We, we get to see yeah. all these super epic stories and super epic, you know, ways uh, that people are just illustrating all, all these different mediums of work. Yeah, yeah I, I think we, we've talked about that a little bit um, here on in Industry Exchange with other other people of um, kind of creating that, that cohesive, you know, for visual artists. It's like, yeah. you want to go in to a show or to wherever you're representing your work with like, hey, I, like, as a, a lay person coming up, I can kind of tell like What's going what on aesthetic you're going for, yeah, yeah. what it is. You have this like cohesive set, so that totally makes sense that it would translate, right. especially also into like photography. For sure. Um, the collections, that's really cool. Do you yeah. guys have any other like breakdowns on the site? You get the collection situation. Is there other like groupings? Yeah, groupings. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's actually pretty. We try to make it as simple as possible. Okay. You know, like, okay. and we try to make the UI both. Uh, I think an experience for the consumer. We're trying to get people off of Instagram, usually from a mobile phone, mm. to buy something and put it in their life in a physical form. Like talk about barriers, you know, and like conversion. A lot of steps. A lot of steps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think you know now with this broader conversation of displaying art, you know, there's going to be some big sea changes when there's device changes that are coming up. We were just talking about virtual reality and augmented reality. What does that mean for the creator class in those worlds? And sure, like Adobe with like a Project Arrow when they partner with Apple, like they allow you to create an AR. But there's going to be a subset of people that need to jump on that early and begin creating on that early. And I think the display and the way that that world will end up working out is the early movers are going to really, really see a, a massive advantage for, for adopting those. And I think there's going to be a radical change in the next five to ten years about yeah. uh, the way that we view and interact with art within our lives. I mean, it is, it is definitely, yeah. It's changing on the daily it's right. kind of like hard to keep up i mean yeah. you know just in this conversation of like you know how much instagram and social media has made art more like i guess tangible for back, lack of a better term yeah you know but like seeing it you can kind of like you're influencing what's in your own feed yeah. you know for sure I mean? yeah so totally you can kind of consume what you want 
Um, but yeah, then at the same time, like you guys were talking about jumping through those hoops to now, I mean, with this process, I feel like it would be so much easier for me to buy art from yeah. artists that I love mm -hmm. because I, yeah, there's tons where they're like, oh, I'm all out of this or like, oh, I don't have this for you know, sure option or like it's too expensive for me to just do the one, you know, so that just makes it like so much easier for I, I think for people to kind of experience that. Yeah, without a doubt. Honestly, we get messages all the time where people will go on and look at someone's gallery and the link was just in their Instagram and they'll be like, hey, like, I want the photo you just put up on Instagram though. And for them, it's easy because, you know, they have it on their phone, they'll just hop on their site and upload that photo. Right. And it's like, cool. uh, it's a cool way just to, to basically, like you were saying, the whole goal is put yeah. this art into your, you know, real life in the physical form, but it really is super real time too. Cause you know, there's a lot of artists that also, I guess going back to like, hey, creative ways that people sell mm -hmm. is, you know, every time they post an Instagram mm. or post a photo or share a photo, um, even on their site, uh, they're also updating the dark room kind of at the same time. Yeah. So people can know, hey, if this is one that I really dig, yeah. I can hop on the shop right away and have that piece of artwork on the way to my house, you know, within 10 minutes. Yeah, I think to go along with that, it's usually a really intentional purchase, you yeah, know, like buying art. Sure, it's like, sure. okay, I really, really like this piece of work. It really speaks to me in some way, but I also have room in my, in my house or apartment yeah. and I also have some disposable income that I yeah. can actually purchase it. Um, and so that always has to line up, you know? Yeah. 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 So now you guys are both artists. We kind of talked about this yeah. um, on the phone. What, what do you think like was your, obviously you guys have created this product, but <laughs> what is each of like your favorite you know, offers from the site that you guys are able to like give to artists being that you're creators yourself. Okay, for sure. I, I'm super big, at least on our, on our current product offerings, I'm super big on making a specific collection, like from a specific trip you went on, a specific project that you shot, um, and really making it easy to categorize like a specific aesthetic that you shot uh, and tried to create. Um, and then also kind of taking it to another step where it's like, hey, um, I'm gonna crop them all the same way so that people can buy, you know, the same, you know, either size prints across all of these and then figuring out ways to kind of make these puzzle pieces on your wall or it's all from the same project and then you're also creating kind of a new art piece on your wall. It's nicely curated. Exactly, right. and it's, it's fun too because, you know, we'll, like part of the luxury of, of the platform that we've created is we, it's really easy for us to get artwork in the hands of our friends. Yeah. And so like on weekends and stuff, we'll be putting together like something super fun for one of our buddies. I just moved into a new apartment or whatever it might be. And we get to kind of test our own creativity in this way. And kind of like we're saying like, okay, figure out a way, like a cool way to fit in these three different canvases. You know, we'll have two, you know, eight by tens on the side, you know, a 12 by 18 in the middle and figuring out fun ways to match all the photos and sizes yeah. um, and yeah. what you create. Yeah, yeah. so that goes back to the other is like, that seems like a really cool way to maybe set up a display. Like, For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. I think we've seen an interesting increase in digital artists and yeah. like surrealism. Yeah. And I'm super into just like, uh, it's like these, you know, they'll get a bunch of different photos from people that they like and they'll uh -huh. create these like hard to imagine landscapes where there's like, I don't know, floating animals, whatever it might be. Like it's really, really crazy work. Oh. And I, I'm super into it because I think it is a first step into the augmented age in some yeah. way where, you know, we have to basically destroy the boundaries of where we think some things can and cannot be. And they are, I think, pioneering that type of creativity in that way. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's so cool, right? Yeah. Getting to like be around creatives all the time. Yeah. And it's yeah. a dream. Just, it's like, a dream. It's for awesome. sure. Yeah. Well, congrats, you guys. For Thank you. For <laughs> Thank making you. your dreams come true. <laughs> Thank you. Right out of college. <laughs> ah, it's killing me. Um, well, cool. Well, that is all of the time that okay. we have today, unfortunately. Um, but Andres Theo, thank you guys so much. For Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, this has been great. This has been super fun. It has been <laughs> fun. Um, you guys, for more information, find them on Instagram at darkroom. Um, uh, darkroom.tech is where you can check out the site. Um, and also for raw artists, if you are a raw artist, you can go into your account. You, they're getting a free. What yeah, is it, it's month? a referral code, free month of free our plus. Month of yep. the plus account. So that's. Yep. Promo ass. code is raw, just R A W. Promo code raw. You guys can remember that. But of course, if you are a raw artist, go into your profile, uh, into your account, and you guys can check that out. Of course, for any information, hashtag raw artist, hashtag industry exchange. You can follow along our adventures. But my name is Megan Jones. I am your host, uh, and we'll be back next month. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you.